Um, hi, uh, it's Mark from Soapbox, and today we are going to be looking at um, sampling uh, within Ableton Live. Um, so I believe in our last video we created the 808 um, by uh, using analog and using the subtractive synthesis method. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, use um, one of the samplers in Ableton to uh, program some drums. Um, so if you look in the instruments you have sampler and simpler. The way I like to break it down is that the sampler is more of a complete version of simpler. However, um, simpler has got some uh, great features. So we're just going to uh, go ahead and get started. So um, I'm going to show you guys what we're looking to sample. Um, I'm just going to sample a drum break. I'm just going to sample this. I'm just going to drag it in. And what I kind of like to do is just kind of make sure that the drum beat is kind of in time with the, the tempo that we're um, composing at. So you can go ahead if it's you know not warp to warp it in time or do whatever you kind of need to do to get in time. So we're working at quite a fast. Yeah. So so let me turn that up. So as you can see, uh, that's in time. What I kind of like to do is kind of just freeze the track and then flatten in it. Um, so what that kind of does, you know, and I think I'll do it over here just so you guys can see what freeze and flatten actually does. Um, I'm going to mute one of these. So one of these plays. Uh, so back what freezing and flattening does is basically it freezes the track and it, once you flatten it it turns it turns it into audio um, so I've done that on a piece of audio just so it kind of keeps it um, in time and yeah we're just going to go ahead and it's uh, a simple I'm going to just drag this on here and go to the slice the slice mode um, so now uh, you know it should slice up uh, individual kind of sections of the drum break onto specific notes I believe it usually begins from C1 C so that way we're able to, you know, create a new drum beat out of um, this sample. What I kind of like to do though is, so with sensitivity, if it's all the way to 100, it's going to chop up every single transient uh, that it detects. So I'm just going to take that down. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of play with the order of the the drum beat.
see they were kind of rearranging this drum beat into something completely different. Oh, by the way, by just highlighting the space and pressing Command D, you can copy that. Maybe get rid of one of these. So one cool thing about sampling in general, and on simpler we have warp, um, the algorithms are more or less the same, but we're not going to use that. Um, one thing I like about uh, the simpler is that you've got this pitch thing here, so transpose, and obviously when you play a sample down um, like at a lower pitch, it plays it at a slower rate, so even by chopping them up and pitching it, you can get, you know, just by pitching, you can get different kind of rhythms. So, there you go. Uh, you also have like filters here. Um, if you go to controls, you can see the full view of the filter. Uh, you have LFO um, as well on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to use. So, for example, if you want to send the LFO to the filter. or wherever you want to send it to, the parameters are there, so that could be your pitch, your pan, your volume, uh, you have a pitch envelope as well. So yeah, you've got extra few uh, controls just to, to make your drum patterns uh, a little bit more interesting um but yeah let's say i'm gonna roll with this one for now you know just for example sake so now what i'm gonna do is maybe get some some sort of loop or some sort of chords um, that we could just uh, sample. So just give me a sec. So we're going to take that loop that I've just put there, that I've just played there, and what we're going to do now, and I'm going to label this simpler so you guys know. I'm 
going to create a sampler track. Um, and we're going to insert, not a simpler, but this time uh, a sampler. And what we're going to do, we're going to click zones. And what this basically is, is like a map of our keyboard. Um, deciding where we're basically going to play sounds on, you know, on what specific keys and whatnot. So, for example, um, I'm going to take this, and as right now you can see it's spread it all across the keyboard, but I want to just move this to C3 right here. So, uh, if I press C3. And what I'm going to do is just chop up each chord. So now when I press C3, it's just going to play that one chord. I'm going to duplicate it. Move this to C sharp 3. And we're just going to again. So now when I play C sharp 3, replace that one chord. So yeah, we're just going to keep doing the same thing, just duplicating it, moving it across, select another chord. Pretty cool, right? So just going to keep. Okay, in it. So that's the D sharp three. Um, and right now we've got to change that chord to this one. And then do the same thing. Move it across. So that one needs to be changed to this one. And then well the 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 chords basically loop. So I'm not going to continue chopping them, but that's how you kind of chop up samples uh, within um, the sampler. And you can have different, you know, you don't have to take one particular sample and chop it into different bits. I thought that's, this was a good example, but you could literally put different samples on different keys uh, to match your taste. Um, so maybe let's remove the bass and... something in here about uh, the sampler so you can reverse all your samples. So I just play the samples backwards so they have the little fade in kind of sound. Um, to 
transpose your controls are here so I might pitch it down Here we add some spread use of the filter there. What I might do is uh, use the LFO, uh, you know, just give you guys an example of how to root things here. I'm going to send it to the filter. And yeah, that's basically how you use the simpler and the sampler. Um, so yeah, I hope that was helpful. And tune in for another tutorial. <laughs>